Hello and welcome to the Off Grid Mountain Homestead. Got a little experiment set up today for you folks, for the nerds. Um, well, I'll just start. Let's start right here with the new product from Greener Power. We got a 12 volt group 24 size lithium iron phosphate battery um, from Greener Power. They were nice enough to send this battery for testing. I've been running some tests on it and you can see part of my testing rig set up right here. So we're going to A, test that battery B, we're going to test this budget breaker right here that's rated 100 amps. Um, C, we're going to test this 1500 watt pure sine wave alpha inverter with an oscilloscope and an amp clamp to verify all the readings we're getting. And we're going to test this 1500 watt modified sine wave inverter with this inverter killer 1875 watt hair dryer. So strap in, hold on, a lot of moving parts, but I think y'all like it. Before I get started, I want to talk about this greener power battery. I got the cut sheet right here. Um, I'll have a link to, to everything in today's video in the description. But we have prismatic cells, it's group 24 size, 100 amp hours, of course. Think I went over that already. And what is our max continuous discharge current? That's what we're going to test right there 100 amps. And then a peak current of 200 amps for three seconds. And then we got a BMS discharge cuff current at 300 amps for 31 milliseconds. So this ought to be a good test for that greener power battery. I've run some small loads on it, cycled it a few times, no complaints at all with this battery. So special thanks to greener power for sending that. Okay, so I've got the meter, Klein meter zeroed out. Take our amp readings right there. I didn't hook up a shunt or nothing like that since this, I'm gonna be moving, moving wires. So I didn't take time to put a shunt in, but I've got the oscilloscope set up for a 100 volt uh, sample range and two millisecond sample time. So you can see everything set up right here, zeroed out. So breakers on, everything's tight. So I'm gonna flip on the Alpha Pure Sign 1500 watt inverter and we'll get a no load uh, reading. So here's the scope readout for it right there. Pretty clean. Don't see any, any peak shaving, any, any weird stuff going on like that, any flat spotting. So we're looking pretty good on the wave with no load. See, no load. 13.2 volts out of the battery, 108 volts um, is what the inverter is producing, AC. And we're pulling 0.16 amps, 0.18, so somewhere around there for idle draw on the inverter. So I got had to set the inverter up a little, a little higher to get this plug for the inverter killer hair dryer. So let's just, uh, I'm gonna turn it on, on cool which is its lowest set, and I think that's just, just running the little motor in it, and on low speed, and let's see what happens. Eleven amps on the DC side. Wave still looking good. All right, now let's go to medium heat. Oh, there we go. Now we got a load on it. 43 amps out of the battery. Starting to get a little bit of distortion on the wave. 110 volts, 12.4 volts. Let's put on high fan speed, try to bring the amperage up. 83 amps. Little, little noise. So it held it. It started to get warm right here on these terminals. So that's not good. Um, I'm gonna run it up, run another test on it. I'm gonna put it on high and just see what it'll take. See if the inverter will, will kick off first or the breaker will trip right here. See if we can, what it'll we'll spike to and then see what the what the wave looks like coming out of this inverter. We'll kick it on to high full 1800 watts we'll see how long it lasts see what pops first so let me try to get see high and then we're going to do fan speed low to start with try to try to get that near 100 amps so uh this is off camera just so i can show you what all the readings are here we go Hundred and thirty four. Alright, the 
the battery cut off. The BMS got it first. If you missed that, I don't know if I caught that on camera. I hope I did. The BMS on the battery stopped first. And then when it come back on, the surge through there got the breaker. So that's that's pleasing to see that this breaker actually held the 100 amps for, you know, however long that was. But that was cool. The BMS cut off worked on that battery. That was pretty slick. So what did that tell us about the first test? Well, this budget inverter is a beast for one thing. And that was pulling a heck of a load there. And uh, it didn't even phase it. The, the cooling fan just started right about the time that the uh, BMS got us. We didn't drop below our low voltage threshold, but we did, of course, hit the amp limit on the BMS on the greener power, which is good. Uh, you know, it held 137 odd amps for, I don't know the exact time. I'll, I'll try to get a count for it in this video and insert it right here. So, you know, the BMS works, it's, it's safe. So if you get an overload, the BMS is gonna cut. And then we had that inrush current come back in where this big load, big uh, resistive load was sitting here. So it spiked through there and popped the uh, breaker. Now, I don't know the rating curve on the breaker, how quick it's supposed to react. This is just one of the cheapest breakers you can get on Amazon, but I just wanted to see if it would hold the 100 amps because there's a lot of intel going on that, that these are not holding 100 amps, but it held 137. So I don't know the trip curve on that, but that's, that's interesting findings. So uh, let's hit it again. BMS got us again. All right, I'm not gonna drain the battery down too much because I still gotta test this one. But BMS hit us again after just a few seconds. So it's protecting the battery and the cells just like it's supposed to, awesome. Reset, I'm gonna take the pure sine inverter off, put the modified sine wave inverter on. We're gonna hit the greener power battery again, get a little bit more abuse. So I got everything set up, same as I did before. Greener power battery. A little bit more discharge than it was starting with. Uh, the same circuit breaker, amp clamp, still set, same, zeroed out. And the oscilloscope, same settings. So it's in the modified sine wave inverter now. So let's look at the at the wave with no load on it. Power that beast up. Remember, she's an antique. You don't want to tear it up, but for the name of science and YouTube, we're gonna, gonna beat on it a little bit. Let me change the sample time on that and get right back to you. Okay, change the sample time from two milliseconds to five so you can see better representation of the modified sine wave block pattern that this thing makes. So that kind of shows you why a modified sine wave inverter is not the best thing for sensitive electronics. So we're not gonna get into all that today, just want to show you the differences on the actual scope. So we're pulling 0.25 an amp with no load. And uh, let me get the inverter killer plugged up and we'll give it another run. Okay, the inverter killer is plugged in. I'm gonna do the same as last time. So, got everything set up. I'm gonna put it on cool right here. And then we're gonna put it on low. Same, same reading as before. I'm gonna go up a step on the heat. It's messing with the top of the wave right there. You see that? At 50 amps. Let's see what she's got. Okay, since I lost contact with these leads and we didn't see what the wave was doing on that last full load clip, I'm gonna hit it one more time. Let's hit it one more time with a different sample rate. That's two millisecond sample right now so we can see the top of the, the wave better. Three, two, one, hit it. And of course this is making noise because we hit the the maximum wattage limit on it you can see the gauge was way up on it so it starts beeping when you when you get near its limit so 
Well, that was a fun little test, wasn't it, everybody? So I drained some power out of the battery, checked its uh, BMS cutoff. Uh, so that was pretty fun. And then, uh, you know, showed that the 1500 modified sign and the 1500 watt pure sign inverter can handle that hair dryer, which is pretty impressive. I thought they would pop off well before this thing got to full, full load. So that's pretty cool. Let me get my leads back in there so we can watch that pretty modified sine wave there. So I've got the experiment set up one more time, a little bit different. Still got the inverter killer, hair dryer, got the pure sine wave inverter back on the alpha. Uh, oscilloscope, amp clamp set the same way, except I changed this breaker out this time from 100 down to a 30. Because I want to trip the breaker. I want to see how long it takes in an overload condition to trip that breaker instead of just popping the BMS in the battery, you know, having it cycle. So 30 amp breaker, 50 amps. Starting to get kind of warm. Should go any minute now. There it went. So what did we learn? Well, it was fun for one. Um, the battery did what it was supposed to do, the greener power battery. Uh, held the loads, the BMS worked like it was supposed to on the overcurrent protection, no problems with it, perfect. Um, the thermal breakers, uh, I don't have the trip curves to reference what they're supposed to trip at. Um, so, you know, take that for what it's worth. The oscilloscope showed that the alpha inverter held pretty consistent voltage through the whole test, varying loads, the frequency was pretty stable, uh, you know, so that's that was good. And then the modified sign, I don't know if you saw on the oscilloscope readings while the modified sine wave was being loaded. The frequency was all over the place. The voltage was unstable, things like that. Uh, then again, this is a old, old inverter and it's modified sine wave. So, you know, it's, I wouldn't expect a lot out of it, but you could see just frequency and voltage all over the place with that. So that would not be good for, for sensitive electronics, things like that. Um, this is a much better choice, more modern, uh, low price budget and voltage drop coming in on the DC side. This is number four uh, cable, you know, 95 amps or so is pushing it and we were way over 95 amps. So we're getting some voltage drop coming through. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope I earned a like from me. If you don't mind, hit that like button if you wanna see more content like this. Uh, questions or anything, put it in the comments or any, you know, anything you wanna see in the future, let me know in the comment section. I'll try to oblige. And uh, if you're not subscribed, I'd greatly appreciate a subscription from you. So thank y'all for watching the Off-Grid Mountain Homestead. Hope you have a wonderful day.